Hello everyone and welcome to my Resident Evil 2 one-shot demo playthrough with commentary. That intro there was made with uh, Lego and stop animation, stop motion animation. Um, I did it like four years ago back when I did Lego reviews. Let me read this real quick. It says, it was supposed to be a short break for Leon S. Kennedy, just one last pit stop as, at a gas station on the outskirts of town when the rookie cop found himself surrounded in a sea of zombies. Along with a newfound friend Claire Redfield, Leon managed to escape to Raccoon City only for an accident to split them apart. Definitely navigating through the perilous streets, Leon has made his way to the city's police station, but he has, but has he really made it to safety? Um, so yeah, it gives you a little backstory, because I think what we're starting in the game, we're probably like about half hour into it, almost like um, some of the demos that were out there for Resident Evil 7, where you were like, um, you know, that got out there that people played. There was um, people talking about how they were playing inside the house after the dinner scene, and, uh, and that was like an hour into the game. So I'm thinking you're going to see, you know, some cutscenes at the beginning you're gonna see them uh, you know Leon and Claire split up and uh, maybe fight through the city a little bit and then get to the police department so I'm curious to see how much of that has been cut out for this demo so we get right to the point uh, here you'll see I'm looking down in the tunnel there Brad Vickers used to show up down there in the original video game um, this outside area has been expanded there's boards there on the door as you can see and it looks like uh, maybe you could cut through that at some point in the game or get through there. It looks like you're going to have to. And it'll be really cool because the main door gets barricaded after you, you run outside here. So um, so I have a feeling you're going to have to, you know, you're going to come out here and face something. And you're going to wish that these front doors weren't barricaded by by Marvin later on. Um, so yeah, the Brad Vickers cameo. Hopefully they do that. There's another cameo outside there. I think if you go mess with the door where the zombies are, you might get another camera angle, which is very similar camera angle from Resident Evil 2 um, and then here we have the RPD I'm looking at the computer here this activates like the next portion of the game although you can skip this I think you can run right over to the shutter and run in and still here. end up trying to save Elliot but at least here you know for the story it's probably better if you want the full story to go and check the computer first uh, I'm a big fan of Resident Evil I mainly like these games for the stories uh, sometimes even if the graphics or stuff aren't that great I'll still, if the story's good, I'll still enjoy it. Um, that's just kind of the kind of fan I am. I'm pulled in by the characters and the lore. So chances are, if there's optional cutscenes like this, I will do them. <laughs> like on every playthrough, I will, I will go watch them. And as we'll learn later, that doesn't actually punish you. So we'll get into that in a little bit. If you watch cutscenes, it doesn't punish your game time. It punishes your time on this demo, but it doesn't punish the game time. But we'll talk about that again later. Um, I did like the beds around. You see, like the IV drip back there under the American flag. Um, it looks like they tried to shelter people here I'm wondering how many survivors they actually were managed you know to pull into the uh, RPD before it got taken over I'm gonna I'm gonna guess they're not that many because otherwise there'd be bodies everywhere or or maybe they all ran in here and then ran back out I don't know but uh, they, they do talk about in some of the files that there was like a a last holding ground here to fight the zombie you know horde coming in I am wondering about this fuse too. The fuse is, uh, you know, the the door, as you notice, only opens halfway. I'm guessing because it's it has half power. So if you put a second fuse in there, I'm, I'm going to assume that the door opens all the way after that. Uh, so later on, when we come back through here, we're probably going to enter through the stairs in the back there and cut through that office to our right, and uh, we'll probably have to put the fuse in to reopen that. But I wonder if that'll make zombies, if that'll be optional, and if that'll make zombies flood the main hall. That'll be really interesting to see actually um, I don't know if they'll, they'll do that but that would be cool to see zombies like everywhere in the main hallway so uh, yeah I love the lighting effects they're really good there's a this is like kind of a I guess it's kind of a conference room or maybe the media room where they get the press to come in there's cameras as you can see in the corner so maybe this is where they make you know statements about stuff you can turn the lights on you can see through that door there with the wood on it but um, I don't know if you can activate that or you'll have to cut through there later again um, We don't know <laughs> we you know, we don't fully know everything looks really good in the old games You could tell what you can interact with in this game. It's pretty it's not as easy You like you have to really look for bullets. You have to really look for things um, I like that. There's bullet holes in the side of that cabinet there <laughs> It makes me wonder someone with my type of aiming skills tried to shoot a zombie and missed a bunch of times um, so yeah, the bathrooms here. Everyone made a big deal about the bathrooms. I always wondered that in the first Resident Evil game, there was like uh, like one or two bathrooms in the whole mansion, but in the the RPD there was never any. And it's not that it, that ever bothered me really that much, but it was something that popped in my head. So it was cool to see that they put bathrooms in here. I think a lot of people got excited. I also liked for me, I like that the men's restroom is the broken one and it's sealed up. 
Um, maybe they trapped a zombie near or something. But there is uh, the, the fact that only the female bathrooms open reminds me of the show The Shield. Uh, in that show, in season one, it was a running gag that one of the bathrooms didn't work. And I think only the females bathroom was available so all the men had to go like take their craps in there uh, or something it was like a running gag in the first season um that we just passed like that bike chain on that door i'm wondering if we're gonna need some kind of acid or bolt cutters to get through that so that'll be fun to see there's another door on the other side of the rpd we'll see later that has uh, the same thing around it to prevent you from getting in um so just more puzzles more ways to get around without um you know using the keys and we'll talk about the keys here soon I like that the power's out on the side of the building too. That's pretty cool. Uh, it adds to that fear. In the old game, it was very well lit. The power hadn't gone off in the building, so I'm worried if I'm wondering if maybe they're just on backup generators, and that's why the main hall is set up like that, or maybe just because liquors are running around, they're just busting out all the bulbs on the ceilings or something. Uh, I'm sure we'll figure out that. <laughs> oh, look at those intestines. I grew up on zombie movies, so that kind of stuff doesn't gross me out actually that much. Uh, here, there's where you see the puzzles. Um, how to solve the puzzles of the statues in the main hall and then in the library. So you have to pay close attention. You have to read it from top to bottom. Like, uh, you know, it's like crown, woman, harp, and then like, you know, something else, lion, ram, or something, I can't remember. Um, or bird, woman, harp, something. We'll talk about those when we get there. Um, as you can see, so the, the headshots, I think everyone instinctively goes for headshots. I've learned now that maybe going for leg and arm shots are good, legs especially, because you could like two or three shots to the leg might rip a zombie's leg off and drop them to the ground, and then they'll just be crawling after you, but you can maybe get away from them. It's very, it's randomized which ones explode when you shoot them in the head. Like sometimes you can get a good shot with the Matilda handgun and blow their brains out with one shot or, or like three shots, uh, but it's random. So that zombie in this playthrough uh, took, you know, eight bullets to put down. But in my second playthrough of this, I shot him twice and his head exploded. So it, it is random. Um, yeah, actually, this is... I, yeah, I'm not a very good shot. <laughs> I, I kind of panic, especially when things move. Like, if I, if it was just, you know, a, if it was stable, but you can see its head sways side to side. Um, I, I, I don't know. I can't predict future movement sometimes. Uh, even when games are supposed to be predictable. I still struggle with it. Um, that was my only time I get bit in this, this whole playthrough. I was very impressed with myself. Because um, I've only played this once before, and it was like six months ago at Comic-Con. So I'm really happy. And that time, I, I got bit a lot, actually. I think I didn't die, but I got bit like three three times, I think. Um, so I, could, I couldn't tell. I think some people pointed out, but when he's crawling through there, I couldn't see if the front door was barricaded yet. Because everyone keeps crediting Marvin to barricading the front door while you're over on this side. But I'm thinking maybe he started the barricade, but because he's injured, Leon ends up helping him finish it to barricade the front door. But I don't know. I mean, it's, it's hard to say because they kind of fade to black. And I think they, even though Leon's in the same clothes here, um, when it fades to black, I think you can kind of hear Leon zipping up his jacket. And that's kind of a nod to the old games when you would change clothes in the lockers. It would make this zip, you know, noise to kind of showcase that the character was switching from one outfit to another. Yeah, Elliot Smith was the cop that died on the other side, so rest in peace, Anyone Elliot Smith. Uh, we're going to run into his desk in a little bit here, so we'll talk a little bit more about him. But I do like that scene where Elliot's like, you know, he gets ripped in half and Leon's kneeling down next to him. And uh, the zombies, like, as Leon takes a breath, like, oh man, I failed to save this guy. And then before he could really feel bad about it, uh, the zombies are already, you know, um, banging on the door. So it's like, it's just like you know getting that plot going like keeping the story going it's a good writing technique to just remind you hey there's a danger there's there's something coming to kill you and you need to move and i really like that they they did that in that scene because you're just like leon's like oh man and then boom and then that's why he feels bad for himself out here when he meets marvin but even marvin is like no it's fine like you, you probably did everything you could we all have stories like that you know during this this horrible incident so so yeah you can see marvin just trying to connect with them there Need this. I like this scene. I, 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 Marvin, just one of those unsung heroes. I, I just felt like there was so much more to that guy's story in the first Resident Evil 2 game um, that I was I wanted to know more about. Uh, you know, I grew up. Dawn of the Dead is probably my favorite zombie movie. Night of the Living Dead is like a very, very close second, the original, and even the 90, 1990 remake uh, by Tom Savini. I like both of those movies. Um, but Dawn of the Dead, big time. I was a big fan of Ken Foray, who's in that movie. He has the line, you know, 
when there's no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. He's the cop that says that. And he had, you know, like a, uh, you know, a buddy cop that was with him. And I just always felt like these two Leon and, and Marvin were like nods to those two characters from Dawn of the Dead. I don't know if they actually were, but to me, I always made that connection, um, between those. And I think that's why I instantly liked Marvin. Cause I was like, Oh, that's, this is like if things went south for Ken Foray, <laughs> you know, in that movie instead of the other way around. Uh, this puzzle, again, like I said, the solution is in the journal. So just read the journal and it's Crown, Lion, Ram. But I think the puzzle is going to change for the main game. I think they just added that artwork in just for the demo. So I don't know if that's the real solution or not. I, I have no idea. Um, but it's so close to the game actually coming out. Maybe they decided to change that puzzle completely. And this is the new version or final version. I have no idea. So I guess we'll find out together when the game comes out. Um, I did want to run around. This is the door to the secretary's office for Chief Irons' secretary. I wanted to come and see. I knew you probably couldn't go through it, but I still wanted to come test it out. I think where the the demo ends, when it when it's over, I think the next logical step to me is coming up these stairs and going through that door we just tried. Um, because then that would bring us back to the side of the, the RPD where Claire might be at the bottom of the stairs outside where the helicopter crashes. And then that'll also be where... Um, you know, where uh, we have to put the fuse in and stuff to get back to the main hall. So I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, this wall that drops down, uh, it's pretty cool because there's a bunch of names of developers on there. And uh, and what's also neat is in one of the Resident Evil Outbreak games, there's a female cop who we're going to see her name on one of the desks coming up uh, in Leon's office, like where Leon's office would have been. And she, um, she, I guess, like solved some puzzle and crawled through that in the Outbreak game. So that's cool that they put that in there it kind of ties in the outbreak continuity now uh, a little bit better um which is which is really fun as a, a stickler for continuity that makes me happy that they did that um but uh, there was developer names on that list as well yeah that so this little sign here this is the we do it guys or we did it or we do it whatever they were their slogan was where they announced that they were remaking resident evil 2 because of fan demand and other fans out there making their own versions of it that little sign is like a is like a nod to them it says we do it at the bottom of that sign uh, which is pretty cool i love all the barricaded stuff here it looks great um all the barricaded windows again just reminds me of night of the living dead and dawn of the dead where they were, you know, boarding up places and going to places. Um, that little radio transmission there, it said 73 Bird, which that means nothing to me as a Resident Evil fan. But then when he said we're going along the river to try to find survivors, uh, that was interesting to me. Because for those who don't know, there are three rivers in lore of Raccoon City uh, for Resident Evil. There's the Marble River, um, which kind of flows uh, into a suburb near Raccoon City called Cedar. Uh, there's Cir Circular? Yeah, Circular. Uh, which flows right through Raccoon City, um, and it kind of divides it like east to west. Um, we'll talk about the keys here in a second, but we yeah, there's and then the the hanging zombie reminds me of Andre from Resident Evil Seven, where he was in the basement. He got you know hang, a pipe th shoved through his mouth, and then there was claws in that door back there. Um, so yeah, definitely some battles right you know happened in here for sure. Maybe even a liquor came through that window I just boarded up. Um, but then there's also the uh, Ames River, which was mentioned in Resident Evil Outbreak File Two which leads to the Arclay Mountains and uh, there was like a hospital over there where some weird scientist was like dumping or dumped a dead body or something in the Ames River and it, and it washed up to shore six months later so uh, so yeah there's it could be any of those three rivers I just I love knowing the geography of Raccoon City and figuring things out and trying to piece together little useful or even useless things um, so yeah that's how I am <laughs> Mickey Pan um, there, if you want to pause these, you can read these. Um, I was going to read them on here, but I'm just, you know, I'm just having fun catching up. But if you want to pause and read those files, they're really cool. They, you know, by David Ford. And I think he's been leaving files around, you know, of their last battles here. And, um, you know, in the RPD, which is, you know, pretty brutal stuff. But it, it kind of gives you more of the backstory of what happened in this, this big shootout that they went through and the amount of survivors and cops that were, you know, that died and were lost in that battle. Um, there are, uh, speaking of Andre earlier, he was, uh, oh, there's this guy. I love this. I just went to town on this guy with a knife. You'll see I cut his arm off, actually. Watch, right? You can't see it because it, it jumped to that cutscene, but now when I push him away, his right arm is gone. Um, and luckily, I missed the first shot, of course, because I was nervous. But uh, you can see one shot to the head 
took him down after that. I don't think he gets back up through the whole demo, even though his head didn't blow off. He, I don't think he got back up. Um, that door right there is locked, but I'm pretty sure we're going to be entering it because if you look at the map there, um, it looks like it connects to the room with the chain back in the uh, conference room. So we'll probably end up on the other side of that door at some point. And then also this, the uh, club key, which the keys, there's four keys in the game. There's the club key, the spade key, um, the heart key, and the diamond key, just like, you know, playing cards. Uh, so, yeah, those are pretty standard for Resident Evil 2, especially. Uh, those were the keys in the original game, so it's cool that they brought them back. And showing that there's a locked uh, key, club key, in the back means we're going to have to return to this side of the map. So, um, yeah, that's good. I didn't solve the... the safe key uh, safe puzzle here but um the safe puzzle is like nine left if you turn the dial to the left to number nine and then turn it right to number 15 and then turn it back left again to number seven i think and then hit a or b or whatever the button is it should open the safe and you'll get another like fanny pack for more <laughs> you know I, you can carry two more items um the sign says welcome leon in the japanese version i think of the original game it said welcome with two l's uh, so it was misspelled. It was like a translation error. So in this one, it was cool because it says Welcome Leon spelled correctly. But on the desk of Elliot where we found that journal, you'll see another L there. Like they like almost like they were like, oh, we misspelled it. And OK, now we're, you know, we're taking the second L off or something. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a, like a cool little Easter egg, I think, uh, for for people who the few people who might know what that is, like that they made that spelling mistake before. Um, but yeah, so. You know, the the puzzles here, I mean, like, the, the, there's a desk puzzle for Leon's. If you go through his desks, uh, the desk near him, there's nameplates for all the officers around him. If you get their initials, in the main game, there will be, I think, uh, a puzzle on his desk that you can solve. And you put in their initials to open up the locks. And, uh, again, that female police officer from Outbreak, I can't think of her name right now, but she's she's one of the officers there. So another Easter egg to Resident Evil Outbreak and more, showing more that Capcom is trying to fit that into the lore because they do mention Alyssa Ashcroft in Resident Evil 7 as a journalist who, you know, was writing about Umbrella and stuff. So it's pretty cool that they're, they're trying, you know, like they're, they're they put in the effort and I appreciate that as someone who's a fan of the lore of these games. Um, yeah. So then here you can see me, I put the key card in, I got the, from the conference room and I got the shotgun. I got a shotgun. Um, earlier we saw a file that shows you how to mix gunpowder so you can make more bullets and, and different variations you can do. I like that because that's kind of like Resident Evil 3. And then there you see that some guy mentions some of the buttons, like the button for 2 and the button for 3 were missing in that locker room. And it looks like they have a prankster working at the police department who's like um, been hiding those buttons. So I guess at some point when we're running through this RPD, we'll find those buttons and we can come back and unlock more stuff to get because right now I just got handgun bullets I got the shotgun with the card key and then I got um, like some film to develop and we're about to run into the save room here and develop that film where there's some more Easter eggs actually uh, to this uh, universe uh, but first we have you know how to mix herbs so you're gonna see me actually mix a green and uh, a red one green and red one um, after I turn the light on here in the dark room <laughs> um, little sign then we got the yeah the red herb so I went ahead and mixed it just to show the feature. I pretty much only did that just to show, just so I had footage of it, really. Um, but in here, you can see a woman's face, so I can't tell who that woman is. We developed this film, which shows us if we put a, a book into a statue later, we might get a scepter to use as a puzzle piece. And then there's a third picture down there that is the original Stars members picture from Resident Evil 2 um, and Resident Evil 1. And it's like a little Easter egg that has all the Stars members, Bravo and Alpha Team, all lined up, uh, you know, like a week before their first mission in the Arkley Mountains or whatever. So, um, so that was, that's pretty cool. I thought that was a neat little Easter egg. Someone was developing that before Leon got there, I guess. Um, and people have been asking if there's going to be the creepy photo of Rebecca under Wesker's desk. <laughs> I, I hope not. That always did make me feel like Wesker was kind of a creep. And I always looked at Wesker, especially later in the games as he keeps developing as like an asexual character. So I never took him as a perv. Uh, looks like we're going to have to solve some puzzle there. Uh, but this whole, so the reason I pointed that out um, was, oh, there's a zombie in this locker real quick. The reason I pointed that, that out was because I think Where's Barry said some developer in an interview mentioned that Nemesis caused that hole. Um, in in the past the steam back there so I'm guessing this is them trying to plan for potential connections um, to a Resident Evil 3 remake if they ever do it so that way they can be like oh we can revisit this map and we can explain where that hole came from 
Um, so that would be really interesting. I hope I hope they are planning for stuff like that so that the continuity between the two games fits better. And that shutter to the right there, I'm thinking that that's a... Well, that was a lucky shot. Uh, but that shutter to the right at the in the second floor, I'm wondering if maybe Jill runs down that and shuts the shutter behind her or, or traps Nemesis in there or, you know, or whatever. Um, but I'm curious to see how this area plays out in the uh, next game if they if they remake three which i hope they do at this point even though i'm i like three i'm not a huge fan as some other res evil fans are um, but i don't dislike it either uh, and i'm certainly hope that it gets this kind of treatment because you know uh, us re2 fans are getting rewarded hopefully re3 fans will at some point too uh, these puzzles bio and res those are just for the the demo so i don't know if those will be the main way to solve those puzzles in the game um, but oh, here's the liquor coming up. <laughs> Normally that happens on the first floor in the original game, so I like that they, just like the Resident Evil One remake, they subvert expectations, and they're like, oh, remember when this happened here? Well, now it's going to happen somewhere else, so it'll it'll scare you, and it did scare me there. Um, so this little journal tells you about liquors and how someone figured out that they were blind, and that you have to. Oh, David figured out that they were blind, and you have to, you know, just don't make any noise around them, and you could probably walk around them. So that's a strategy to fight them if you're ever low on ammo. Just try to sneak around them. Don't run. Just sneak. Uh, so that, yeah, so do, do your best. Um, I'm sure I will screw that up. I like uh, downstairs when I cut the guy in half, I, like his arm off. I was, love that I was able to get my knife back, too. Uh, that's really good. Uh, but back there, we passed a desk with a key on it. And, uh, and also on that desk was a, a mannequin statue. And that mannequin statue is from Resident Evil 7. Um, it's, uh, it's like a miniature version of it. Same with the Andre thing where he's like on the pipe, that cop on the pipe. Uh, there's a flower, like a set of flowers that you can find on some of the, the end tables in the RPD and they match flowers that were in the Baker home in Resident Evil 7. Uh, there's a magazine that talks about Rac uh, Raccoon City uh, before it was, you know, explodes, <laughs> you know, before it gets nuked. And then that magazine's also in Resident Evil 7. And when you pick it up, it's like, oh, it was 16 years since that tragedy in Raccoon City. But it tells you, you know, it's the same magazine. So there's like, I think they just, you know, like, hey, we need a lot of, you know, textures and we need a lot of, you know, items. I think there's even a grandfather clock in this very room that I'm standing in that is the basically the same clock that's in the Baker home uh, in Resident Evil 7. So yeah, I think they were just like, hey, we built all these things and we need to fill space in this new game. So they just recycled a bunch of stuff, which is a smart money making technique. But then also you could look at it as like just like a fun Easter egg for for fans who notice that kind of stuff. Um, and clearly I'm shooting. the, I'm trying to shoot this here. I don't think that's how C4 works. I don't know if you can just shoot it and explode it. I just thought I don't know. I have a dumb. I don't know anything about weapons. So I was like, oh, maybe I just shoot it. But I don't know. I think you actually need a primer or, or something to detonate it. So. Yeah, I think I, I think I just kind of screwed that up. Um, yeah, so if, if if someone's like watching me shoot it and go, dude, bro, stupid, uh, that's why. It's because I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to weapons. I just figured it would explode. I've seen too many movies. So there's a mannequin right there, but I, I didn't pick up that key on purpose because I was wondering. I saw Where's Barry play this, and people were. I saw people online asking, can you put in both medallions before that final cutscene? Oh, that little statue back there. I was thinking that was from Devil May Cry, but I can't remember. Maybe some Devil May Cry fan can can tell me I'm right or wrong on that one. But there's like a little white statue that looked like a balancing. It was like, you know, like a judge kind of thing where it, like a, um, you know, it had like a, like the, the balancing of justice or something on it, but it, it kind of looked like that, but it, but it wasn't, it wasn't Lady Justice. It was like a, a demon looking thing. So I was wondering if that was from Devil May Cry. Because uh, Capcom, they do a lot of things. There's even a locker that says JoJo on it. And that was in the original Resident Evil 2. And that's a reference to another Capcom video game that they make. Um, called, I think it's JoJo's Bizarre Adventure or something like that. Um, yeah, I got pretty cocky with the shotgun in this area. Um, but you'll see, I'm going to miss a shot right here. Like, just, boom, miss. <laughs> Luckily, I had the knife still. And the knives do break, so be careful. Don't use them too much, because... Uh, they will break. I love that little effect though. The, the zombie's dead body falls on me and Leon pushes it off of him. I love that they went that far to to do that. That's pretty awesome to be on. I mean, that's, that's really good attention to detail. Uh, the reason the third floor is a mess, by the way, we were up there like, you know, shuffling around. I was shooting at the C4 and stuff. Apparently that area of the of the RPD is being renovated because this place used to be an art museum in the 60s and then it closed down in like 68 or 69 
and then the police which at that point you know raccoon city was only like the Arklay Mountains area, and there was like some, you know, facilities out there being built, Spencer's Mansion, and there was some homes in like a suburb out there, um, and like a hospital and stuff, uh, and the training facility and all that. All that stuff was out there, but it wasn't like big yet. It wasn't like a, a city city, you know. It was it developed mostly because of umbrella funding. So I think that's pretty neat that they took over this former museum and turned it into a police department, and then even now, like. Irons is like, I want the third floor remodeled. I want the clock tower fixed. So that's why there's all those paint cans and everything upstairs and why it looks like, you know, it's being demolished. It's, it's because of renovations. Um, and they're going to explain that more in other files in the game. So I don't want to talk too much more about that. I don't want to spoil that for anybody. Um, but that's just kind of like the setup there. Uh, again, another puzzle. I think that one's the one with the bird, the lady, and the harp. And that'll, do th that'll you know, solve that puzzle for you, get you the unicorn pendant. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know why I did this, but I, I guess I just wanted to unlock all the doors. So I'm running back down to the Welcome Leon room just to, um, you know, go out that door to see Marvin. I kind of, in retrospect, I wish I would have went out the library door because then I would have had like six minutes to play a second time. And I probably could have done a speed run in six minutes. Um... For, for sure. I, I'm pretty sure I could have, but instead I only had like two and a half minutes to do a speed run and I screwed up by watching a cutscene. So I never actually completed that speed run either. <laughs> so yeah, I wish I would have, you know, done that and got out of there in time. Uh, but then you saw I got the police station maps, which is useless now at the end of the demo, but in the main game, I'm sure that's a great place to, to give you that. So you can kind of map out your strategy and where you're going to go. Um, so yeah, but yeah, this is this demo was a lot of fun, I, and I'm so excited for this game. It's uh, you know, ever since the Resident Evil One remake, I had hoped that they would remake Resident Evil Two, and I'm so glad that even though it's 16 years later or something, I'm so glad uh, they did because it's it, I'm gonna say it was worth the wait and and probably, and I hope we don't have to, if they do make a Resident Evil Three remake, I hope we don't have to wait 16 years. If we have to wait like five, that's fine, but not like 15 or 16 years. That would be too much. Um, but yeah, and then this is the end of the demo, and you come out and you see Marvin here, Marvin Branow, um, not to be mistaken with Kenneth Branow, a great director and actor. Uh, but Marvin Branow is t uh, he has footage of Claire showing up, and I love that that it's even an old like uh, flat uh, laptop. It's like from the 80s or from the late 1990s. Um, that's pretty cool. They did a good job on maintaining the integrity of the the technology at the time so far. So that's cool. Um, and then you get this little outro there. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I mean, I I, I dug this this in, this you know demo a lot, and uh, I hope you guys did too. Um, it says I, I beat it in 21 minutes, but I I did not <laughs> actually. Um, I uh, I beat it in like 27 minutes. But the thing so what this tells us is that when you play the main game, uh, you actually get uh they're not going to count cutscenes. so if you play through the whole game if you're trying to speed run it and you still watch cutscenes, it doesn't look like it's going to count the cutscenes towards your actual time which is pretty interesting so that means you could maybe speed run it and still get the story and it not punish you for watching cutscenes or forgetting to skip a cutscene, um which is nice but unfortunately for the demo it still counted those minutes that you watched cutscenes. so even though it says i completed in 21 minutes when i started my next game I didn't have eight minutes and you know 13 seconds to beat it um or or whatever you know i had i actually had to do it um you know in like three minutes or something so yeah so there's about five minutes of cutscenes in this uh demo so be on the lookout for that in case you do end up playing this um but i imagine most of you already have and you've you know you already got through it or you watch someone else play it and you're just waiting for the game to come out which i don't blame you um and a lot of people ask me why i didn't create a second account and play this again and it's eh, just because i don't really need to um I, I i you know um i'm easily sated like when it comes to stuff like this i get a taste of something and that's fine i don't like have a gluttonous uh need to constantly you know like you know like create like 10 different accounts just to play the game like you know 30 times uh i know why other people do sometimes people you know are are active YouTubers, active content creators, and they need that kind of stuff so they can have footage. So it makes a ton of sense to me on that level. But me on a, as a personal level, it's just like, eh, I played it once and that was fine with me. And then I got like three minutes of a second playthrough and it's totally cool. So, um, so yeah, so, you know, if you like this video, I hope you did. Um, you know, I hopefully I said some useful things in here, threw in some lore just for fun. Uh, we're not going to, the trailer's not going to play if you're waiting for that. It's not going to play. Um, it's, we're just going to stay here on this screen, and then I'm going to do a little outro here. Just remind you that I will be playing this game live on Twitch 
when it releases on January 24th. Uh, make sure you pre-order the game. Uh, I'm going to, even though I don't work for Capcom or they don't sponsor me, I'm still going to push this because the game looks amazing and I really want it to sell well because only if it sells well do we get other remakes, you know, or do we get more Resident Evil games? And uh, and if they're going in this direction, I really liked 7, but I'm really excited for this direction for, for the 2 remake and I hope future Resident Evil games kind of look like this from now on. Uh, that would be amazing, <laughs> whether they're remakes or not. If whether it's Resident Evil 8 or Resident Evil 3 remake, I don't care. If it looks like this, I'm, I'm going to be super happy. So please, you know, go pre-order it, pick it up when it comes out January 25th. Uh, but if you want to watch me stream it live, I will on my Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash seek and destroy. And I will be playing it there. And then I will do the uploads. I'll edit some of the videos and upload those edited versions um, onto YouTube, onto my secondary channel. So I'll put a link that, to that down below. We're going to use that this year to, to put all my game playthroughs on. Because on my main channel, I'm going to try to keep it towards you know the, the main shows I create on here and the new shows I'm coming up with in February. So that's going to be this channel. And all my shows are going to return in February. So all my playthroughs from now on are going to be over on my secondary channel. And I'll put a link to it down below. Uh, so yeah, thank you. I appreciate you watching. Please comment down below your thoughts on either this demo, the game, which you're most excited for. If any of my theories or, or lore stuff that you want to talk about, you know, let me know down below. We can continue a conversation down there. And be sure to check out my History of Resident Evil videos that are uploading now. Actually, I think the first episode is up. And I will have more coming out uh, in the weeks leading up to Resident Evil 2. And then also maybe a week or two after it into uh, like, you know, late January, early February. And all of these videos, there's like 12 videos. And they're going to basically talk about the lore from Resident Evil, like, all, you know, the 1960s, you know, the police department, you know, all that stuff, like all that lore that I talked about, some of it here in this episode. We're going to go over every single thing um, at, in, in that show. So make sure you watch them. They're going to be less than 10 minutes long each episode. And they're just going to tell you the history of Resident Evil from the 1960s, the creation of Umbrella, the finding of progenitor virus, the creation of T-virus, all the way up to the events of Resident Evil 2. So if you've never played this, you know, been in this world before, never played in these games, then this, these videos will basically be for you. And if you're a hardcore fan, maybe you'll like how I, you know, condense all these stories into these short videos, uh, you know, to to help remind you of the plot and the story of Resident Evil. Because if you watch the Resident Evil live action movies, you're going to think there's no story to Resident Evil and that there's nothing special about this video game universe. But there actually is. There's a lot of detail in this storyline. And it's what I love most about Resident Evil. And I want to share my love of that with you guys. So hopefully you watch those videos. I'll put the link to the first episode down below and more of them will be coming up very soon. Thanks so much for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe and click that notification bell so that you don't miss any upcoming episodes. See you soon.